everyone. Thanks for listening in. Uh, my name is Emil Avram, and I'm Vice President of Business Development at Dominion Energy. Our group is responsible for the development of new power stations across multiple technologies, uh, including renewable, fossil, and advanced nuclear stations. Uh, we do stay close to our planning group internally as well, which is the group that develops our integrated resource plans for our electric utilities in Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Today, I'm going to talk about a, a very important topic. It's about our nation's natural gas system and the reliability it creates for our electric customers. At Dominion Energy, natural gas has been a critical part of the decarbonization of our power station portfolio here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, particularly. Since 2005, we have, uh, uh, the, you know, the company Dominion Energy Virginia, which serves about 2.5 million electric customers and has a peak capacity of 20,000 megawatts has successfully reduced its power station carbon emissions here in the Commonwealth by about 50%, mostly attributable to the retirement of several coal-fired power stations and their replacement with natural gas-fired combined cycle power facilities. Our most recently completed facility, Greensville County Power Station, was placed in service just two years ago and is one of the most efficient state-of-the-art power stations in the country, operating at a nominal capacity of 1,588 megawatts. And during the colder months, it's capable of producing over 1,700 megawatts of power and can utilize up to 250,000 decatherms of natural gas per day. Since 2010 alone, we've added nearly 5,000 megawatts of natural gas-fired power generation capacity which is enough electricity for more than 1.2 million homes. So obviously, you know, pipelines run beneath our streets, our cities, continents and oceans, you know, without them and the energy resources they deliver, modern day conveniences would not be possible. You know, according to Energy HQ, the US has more than 1.3 million miles of pipelines delivering trillions of cubic feet of natural gas. It's been estimated that if all the natural gas pipelines in the U.S. were connected to each other end to end, it would reach to the moon and back almost three times. And the U.S. has more pipelines than any other country, followed by Russia with 101,000 miles and then Canada at 62,000 miles. So we have 13 times more pipelines than the next closest country. That's incredible. And the first recorded use of iron pipe to transport a hydrocarbon fuel in the U.S. was established in 1859 by Edwin Drake in Titusville, Pennsylvania. So we've been doing this successfully for over 150 years. But that's enough about our country's and my company's bragging rights. Um, I'm really here to talk about how natural gas creates a more reliable electric grid. So I want to put this. Uh, graphic up and show you here, uh, you know, this, what the chart that I'm throwing up here shows you how much of the current natural gas supply is consumed by the power sector. Based on the chart on the right, it looks to be about more than 20% of total U.S. daily supply or about 25 BCF per day. So the needs from the power generation sector are a very large percentage with a mix of other, certainly industrial, commercial, and residential uses of natural gas included. And I do also want to show you on the next slide, here, It shows how natural gas use for electric generation has grown over the years. You'll see that it's about a 5X increase in consumption, consumption between 1996 and 2018. So I, you know, I think I've gotten the message across that the electric generation sector relies heavily on what the natural gas industry does 
to produce, transport, and deliver this precious fuel. So why is electric reliability so important and how do we how do we make that happen? Well, certainly we rely on electricity for many of the things we do each day. And the importance of this vital service is critical, especially during these recent months. Many of us have been working from home. We use electric power to charge our devices, run our appliances, secure our homes, pump our gas charge our electric vehicles if you have an electric vehicle, keep our food cold, and now even stream teachers' lectures to our kids. You know, those types of utilities, for example, as, as an example, also rely on electric service being available to the home to operate. You know, as, as I mentioned, such as internet service uh, through fiber optic or cable communications. So I do wanna show you uh, the next slide here. I think it's important that we talk about this. Uh, you know, the importance of building a reliable electric system is further recognized in light of what has recently happened in California. From what I have studied, you know, what occurred in California was a reliance on a combination of one, in-state intermittent power generation resources, and two, imported power from surrounding states to address peak load requirements. But, you know, when those solar and wind facilities were not meeting electric demand, which many times they may not, and those out-of-state resources were unavailable and needed by those surrounding states during the heat wave, it created rolling blackouts for California customers. The incredible interruption to homes and businesses uh, just from those events is expected to cost billions of dollars this year. So how can an electric system be created reliably, you might ask? Well, number one, you need to ensure that you have a sufficient mix of dispatchable resources, which I'll get to in a minute, along with your intermittent producers, such as wind and solar facilities and are developed to address that variability in customer electric load throughout each day and even across seasons. Uh, and, as, and plan as well for those peaks, such as the ones that occurred in California. You know, the electric grid was originally designed and developed to accommodate rotating equipment. You know, when uh, you know, if some of you may know, Westinghouse's AC system won the battle over Edison's DC system. Uh, you know, and we've been generating electricity at 60 cycles per second ever since then. So, you know, building a system that is completely reliant on direct current or DC electric electric based systems uh, is not a good recipe for a reliable grid as well. So, you know, while we continue to drive toward meeting net zero goals in the electric utility sector, we have to think about how to do so in a way that protects customers from blackouts and the resulting economic impacts. Today, these dispatchable resources, which are generating facilities that can relatively quickly go up and down in output on demand, you know, really are truly natural gas fire generation assets. In, in my opinion, no other asset that I'm aware of can ramp up and down on demand as quickly and cost effectively as peaking and combined cycle plants. So, you know, as we look into the future, and until a new power generation technology comes along that is both zero carbon and highly dispatchable, we see the need for natural gas plants being required for the long term. Some might question though, you know, well, what about renewables coupled with storage, right? You, you, you probably read quite a bit about that. Um, well, you know, many utilities, including Dominion Energy, have evaluated that as a long-term solution, but, you know, getting the scale needed that uh, natural gas plants provide will be complex and challenging. Additionally, 
you know, lithium ion battery systems, which are generally what are being deployed today, are typically economically viable with about four hours of discharge time onto the grid. So, you know, in our industry's quest to get to net zero carbon emissions, as more intermittent resources are added, such as wind and solar, and dispatchable generation is reduced in the event that it is reduced, the need for longer duration storage technologies increases in order to keep the same level of electric reliability for our customers. I wanna repeat that because I think it's a key statement here. Uh, as more intermittent resources are added and dispatchable generation is reduced, the need for longer duration storage technologies increases in order to keep that same level of reliability. Well, you know, multi-day storage technology does not exist right now and may not for quite a while. Um, you know, and this that is going to be required because when the wind doesn't blow, the sun doesn't shine, something has to meet the electric demand. And that is where I see natural gas power stations playing such a vital role now for electric utilities. So, you know, a couple other questions you might ask, how about the possibility of further reducing carbon emissions from natural gas fired power stations? Well, the industry is currently working on solutions that you would, uh, that would further reduce their carbon footprint. Um, for example, such as co-firing with green hydrogen, which is a gas produced from renewable sources, or possibly carbon capture utilization and sequestration or CCUS, which captures the CO2 in the exhaust gas and either utilizes or sequesters it in a manner that prevents the CO2 from re-entering the atmosphere. You know, both of those technologies are continuing to be developed and show some promise, but have certain challenges to overcome still uh, related to certain economic, public policy and technology perspectives. So, and there's also um, the opportunity to potentially utilize renewable natural gas in power stations, which due to the significant environmental benefits may only require a small percentage to be co-fired with traditional pipeline natural gas to essentially offset the carbon emissions overall. Uh, however, you know, you can imagine the quantities required to do so across the U.S. are not at the point where there are enough biogas farms developed to meet that type of demand, but it is certainly a possibility in the future. So, in summary, natural gas is a vital component of the electric power business, which has grown fivefold over the past 20 years. We've seen why these assets are so important to electric service reliability firsthand with the recent rolling blackouts in California. A portfolio that has a broad mix of the right dispatchable and intermittent resources is key to preventing such occurrences in the future. And right now we cannot live without it, uh, without natural gas plants, with the energy storage technologies currently available. We will need long duration storage for that to occur, which certainly could be available someday, but not right now. And finally, additional technology solutions are being developed that could further reduce the carbon emissions of natural gas power stations, such as hydrogen co-firing, carbon capture utilization and sequestration, and maybe even RNG could assist with this challenge in the future. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this content, and I certainly appreciate the opportunity to speak with all of you today. Natural gas will continue to play a critical role in the electric power business, all while continuing to support the goal of reducing and ultimately achieving net zero carbon emissions. Thank you.